I am going to show you how I built my home theater riser. Now I've seen a number of how-to videos online and where the people have built risers, most of them seem to be the style in which you would build one layer and then add another on top of it in order to achieve the overall height these typically require. Although there's nothing wrong with this method, you're essentially building two complete risers. It's double the work and double the material. In this video I will cover how I built mine, which would be similar to the method of building an outside deck. I hope this video helps, and if nothing else, at least gives you another option to consider if you want to build your own. So as we get started, you're going to need to see if there's anything in your way which will prevent you from making your riser the height you want. In my case, I went with 15 inches tall, which unfortunately goes right across the outlets. Typically, theater risers are going to be at least 12 inches tall and potentially all the way up to 18 inches, depending on how many rows of seating you will have. In either case, standard outlet is going to be in the way of this overall process. Don't let this discourage you. As you can see here, you simply remove your outlets and extend the wires, which later we will feed into the new floor. Now if you want to save yourself some time, mark all of your studs on the front end so as you attach the wood later you could just move along already knowing where to put your screws. As you install your first part of the frame, make sure it is level because the rest of the build is going to use this as a guide. Once you have it in place and level, secure it at one of the far ends so you have the ability to pivot it up or down if it got bumped off level during this process. Once you have it level, secure it the rest of the way into the studs you already marked. At this point, you will want to measure the depth of your riser so you can attach the side rails. Be sure to take into account whether you're mounting your 2x4s inside or at the end of the side rail so you can account for that in your overall measurement. Once you have this ready to go, follow the same basic steps as the back portion of the frame, making sure it's level and attached securely into the wall studs. Now don't forget as you put these side pieces up to drill holes and feed your wires through from the outlets that you're going to relocate. Once you have both sides up, you're ready to install the front plate of the overall frame. If you did a good job making sure everything was level, you should simply have to line this up with each end and then attach it with screws into the side rails. Now obviously this length would not be strong enough on its own, so depending on the width of your room you will want to add braces or legs across the front. After this, it's time to attach the hangers, which your floor joists will sit in. As I mentioned before, you might want to just measure them all out at once so you can rock and roll when you start attaching them into the back rail. I used 16 inch centers, but 24 inch centers would probably work as well. Once they're all in and secure, start cutting your floor joists to insert into the hangers. Once secured, level up the other end with the front rail and attach them with screws. At this point, the basic frame of your riser should be complete and all you will need to do is layer it with plywood, cut out for your outlets and anything else you relocated into the new floor. After this, it's time to finish your riser however you choose. Typically carpet is used to help deaden the sound and it's soft on the feet. However, for the sake of this video, I did not go into detail on either of those processes since it's pretty straightforward. The main goal of this video was an alternative method to having to build two layers in order to get the overall height required for a theater riser. I hope this video was helpful and gave you an example of how to save time and money on your build. Take a look at the finished product so you can see what you can have with a few 2x4s, screws, and plywood. If you enjoyed this video and it helped you out in any way, hit that like button. And if you'd like to see more builds and DIY projects, consider subscribing. As always, Feel free to comment or ask me any questions you might have about this build and I will try to get back to you. Hope you have a great day and happy building.